Hey, what's up guys? Tony Flirty here, part of this new channel that we have, Swamp View Studios. This is the very first video that we have on this channel. So it's probably not gonna be the best video you've seen on YouTube, but my hope is that you'll consider subscribing because we got plenty more videos like this to come within the context of videography, video shoots, interviews, all that stuff. My business partner, Nick Matthews, is not here today. So this is just gonna be you and me unboxing this slider. So let's do it. Now I'm not gonna lie, this thing weighs a ton. What a nice box we have here. Even got wheels down here. Wow, this is nice. Look at what we got in here. This is, I see the entire slider right here. Wow, oh my God, is this a battery? What else do we got? Rhino Arc, holy crap. There's two ethernet ports here. This looks like some sort of motorized gimbal thing. And I should just say at this point in the video that Nick was the one to buy this. Uh, I did absolutely no research on this, so I'm pretty, I'm a pretty good like third party independent person to do this video because I really have no idea what this is, except it's a slider from Rhino. So we're gonna figure this out together. There's four pockets up here. Looks like they're each filled with something. We got two TSA security locks. Looks like some Rhino documentation. Cool sticker. A blue aux cable, an extra belt from the, the motor, an ethernet cable. Two more ethernet cables. And over on this side we have some international adapters. I don't know what this is, but it does have an ethernet port. So that's starting to make a little bit of sense why there's so many ethernet cords. And finally a charger. Okay, let's close this guy up for now. I'm gonna put it down on the table behind me and take out each piece individually. See if we can get this thing working. Lo and behold, the actual slider. Now, like I said, the box is heavy and this is really where the majority of the weight is coming from. I'd say, I don't know, 20 pounds at least just for this piece right here. This guy, the Rhino Arc 2. That is what we are unboxing today, the Rhino Arc 2. And this guy is another at least 10, 15 pounds. Okay, so there's not a quick start guide. So I think we're gonna have to head to the internet to figure out how to get started with this because it's a little overwhelming, I'll be, I'll be honest. Okay guys, so I cleared off the table here except for the slider, the Arc 2 motor I'm thinking this is, and my MacBook Pro, which I have up here, Rhino's YouTube channel, and they have a quick start guide on how to set this up. So the first thing I noticed is there's actually legs on the slider. So there's screws on either side. You kind of just flip them around. When they're in position, you can tighten them back up. So we got two on this side and two on this side over here. So we got this elevated now up off the table. The one thing you wanna make sure here is that the brake is off. Cause if this is on and you're trying to run the motor, you're gonna have a lot of issues. So this freely moves across the slider right here like this. So that means the brake is off. You wanna keep that off. And then next up, we're gonna take this piece, the one that says Rhino R2 on it. And I'm still thinking it's the motor. Um, what you do, there's actually a power button on here. So you wanna hold that in for just a couple seconds until the LED screen turns on. And you'll see the Rhino logo pop up right away here. And there's actually a gimbal right here. So you can use that to control and go through the menu. So we wanna go all the way over to the right it says mount on and off. You wanna click into that on the, the gimbal there. And it says, which way? Do you wanna do it on or off? So we wanna do on, go ahead and click into that. And it says set arc two on mounting stud and hold on. Okay, I got it just hovering above the, looks like maybe a three and a half millimeter mounting point. And it says I'm ready, so I'm gonna click on that. And right now it's spinning and locking itself onto the slider. Tightening base with mounting tool, done. And now this guy is attached to the slider. And the last thing I wanna do here is pull out this little wrench that they got conveniently in this little pocket underneath the mounting point. And you wanna stick it in underneath here. 
and kind of turn it to the side to tighten it. And the reason you want to use this tool as opposed to spinning this is because this, this is what's going to spin during um, pans and parallaxing. So you don't want to spin this manually. You want to use the tool to get it nice and tight. So we'll go ahead and put that back into its little home right there. Okay, moving right along, we are learning as we go here. Apparently, this little guy that I thought was a battery is actually the motor. This is a high torque motor. And what you do is you mount it over here on this side where you have the little screws. So what you do to do that is loosen them up a little bit. There's two of them. And then all you have to do is set that right down here. So it locks into place and then simply Tighten it back up. Okay, so one thing I just learned here by watching this YouTube video is that you want to have the motor on the right hand side of your staging area here. So I did this backwards. This is on the left hand side. This is my left hand, left hand side. So what we have to do, I think, is to just flip it around 180 degrees. And that way we'll have it properly oriented. But unfortunately, this is now mounted the wrong way. So let's go back in here, use our joystick to mount on and off. It says which way on or off. I want to do off. I'm ready. Okay, that was not what we wanted. Um, stop. Okay. Uh, don't do that. It says loosen base. Oh, we have to loosen the. Okay, so big mistake there. Again, got to get your tool out and stick it in the bottom like that. And then just get it started to be. Loosen like that, put the tool back into its little home, and now I'm ready to loosen. There we go, it comes off automatically like that. And since we have it off, we wanna properly orient it with the logo facing forward. So we'll put that back on. So select that setting again, which way on, and then click on I'm ready. The motor will be going to spin, tighten it right down there on the base. Okay, tightening with the tool again. So you just slide it in there and turn it a little bit and we're good to go. Okay, so we have this guy properly oriented facing the right way. The motor's on the right hand side. We already screwed that in. The mounting point is set up and tightened. The next thing we want to look at is cables. So the first cable we have is this. This is a shutter release cable, not a 3.5 millimeter audio cable like I mistakenly said in the beginning of this video. So this guy on the left hand side here, all the way up front towards you guys, will plug in here. Now, because we're not gonna, and the other side obviously will plug into your camera. Because we're not gonna do a time lapse, uh, we're not gonna use this cable, but just so you know, that's what that cable is. The more important cable is this cable. This is the, um, I guess the power and the data that comes into the motor from like this is how these guys communicate basically so you want to take the end that is curved like this that side of the Ethernet cable and plug it in here and then they specially designed this cable to be like a ribbon cable so that when you're uh, panning back and forth this way and that way the cable won't interfere with the, the track here it'll only push out and not come and mess anything up so the other side of this plugs into the back side of the motor and now that we have that set up we can go on to the next step okay so just to catch you up we have this which offers you pan tilt and slide that's three axes the fourth axis if you want that and I think this might be an optional accessory but we have it so we're going to use it is this focus rod and this allows you that fourth dimension of like zooming in focusing in and I think this this little um, spin wheel here will actually take your manual focus on your lens and focus it in and out. So the way you install the focus rod is up top here there's a hole where the focus rod will fit into but first we have to unclamp this little clamp that kind of tightens it in place slide it in and we'll have to play around with the settings when we actually mount our camera up here. But once you have it the appropriate distance in, you just clamp it right back down like that. Now the last part to the focus rod is the second ethernet port, the ethernet cable. So you have an ethernet port down here on the bottom. 
So we'll slide that in there. And the other end of the cable goes into the only other open port down here. Now for the life of me, I couldn't figure out how to get the plate up here off to mount the camera. It's as simple as lifting up this side little lever here and you can slide this out and there's a little other button to like a safety and there you got your plate. So we're not going to put the camera on just yet. I just wanted to show you guys how to take that on and off and to put it back on, make sure you push that button in and when you have it in place, go ahead and lock it down. I think we're about ready to have this guy move and I just did that just a couple seconds ago. The camera wasn't rolling, but uh, I did a calibration and it seems like you have to calibrate this when you first set it up, so that's what you go ahead and do. One of the menu options, there's one, two, three, six menu options here. The one all the way to the right is calibrate. So I'll continue to calibrate. You just use the joystick to navigate over there, click start. Oops. And then it says calibrating and there's an option to stop, but I don't think we want to stop it. Let's see what happens as we approach the end of the track here. Just gonna have my finger right over the joystick just in case it doesn't know what to do when it gets to the end. Okay, success, motor calibrated. Click continue and we're ready to go. So the first menu option here is video. And the way that the Rhino Arc Slider 2 works is via keyframe. So it's asking us here to set keyframe number one. And watching the video on Rhino Camera Gear's YouTube channel, it seems like you are able to spin this freely without any problems. So let's just have this be your first keyframe. Now it says set keyframe number two. Oh, look at that. You can use the joystick. Don't, don't do what I said. Use the joystick to pan and the joystick to tilt. So you see that guy go up and down. I'm using the joystick to do that. So, um, so we have keyframe number one. I'm actually not sure. I think we can just freely move it. Nope, we cannot do that. So how do we get it down the track for keyframe number two? Let's figure that out. And yeah, I just broke the felt. This is not good. Oh, no, I didn't break it. It just slid out. So this is a good thing to know. So the belt is not a continuous belt. There's actually an end to either side of it. And what you do is you slide it in underneath the mounting plate here and you spin these little knobs to lock it into place. So I was really worried there for a second that I broke it. It's okay, um, I, it's meant to do that. I think we have to go underneath to get the cable to go back on. So I'm gonna slide it off the edge of the table here, probably outside the frame of the camera, go underneath and hook that guy back on. Okay, I think we're back in business here. So let's get this guy back on the table, flat and level like that. And let's go ahead back out of this keyframing and recalibrate. So let's see if everything's okay. Okay, so it says it's calibrated. So it seems like it only calibrates to the right side. But you have two different joysticks. I won't go into too much detail here, but your main joystick controls your pan and your tilt, and the joystick on the front of the unit controls your focus and your linear movement. So if I want to create a video... Oh, okay, okay. Okay, so this is... I, I completely misunderstood the video. There's two joysticks. The one up here controls the tilt and the pan, okay? There's another joystick, a second joystick up front here, and that controls the focus and the slide. So that's how we're gonna set the second keyframe here. We set the first keyframe all the way back here. We're gonna slide it over. Uh, let's just go halfway. And once we get there, we'll go ahead and click the down button on the joystick to set the second keyframe. So that looks good right here. Set keyframe number two. Duration, 40 seconds. Um, that's a little high, so let's push that down to how far can we go 42 41 40 won't let me go below 40 seconds that's all we're allowed to do 40 seconds so it's going to be a 40 second we'll speed it up in post um loop off start move okay that was kind of exciting a little slow uh we could add some more action and we kept the pan and the tilt the same angle so let's switch that up as we pan and uh, move across the slider. So let's start the move. 
That is really cool. What a thing of beauty. I think we're ready to get a camera on here. We're not going to need this focus slider because honestly we don't have the proper ring adapter for your lens. Apparently you need some type of gear system around your lens to enable that to work. So the focus rod, we're going to take that out right now. And I guess we're going to have to use the camera that I'm recording on because that's the only camera that I have. So let's just remove this focus rod. We don't need that. We'll take out the plate here with this mechanism again. And let's come on over here to the camera. Okay, hello from the other side of the camera. This is the camera mounted on the slider from the perspective that we just left it pointing up and to the right. So we're gonna go ahead and do that same exact test, the pan up to the pan down, all the way across the slider to halfway and see how that looks. So I'm gonna go ahead and start it. Here we go. Okay, and this is the other side of the pan. I'm sure that looked really silly and kind of goofy, but that just goes to show you how cool the slider is. I'm gonna stop talking and switch it back. All right, guys, that's about it for this unboxing and review of the Rhino Arc 2 video. I hope you guys liked it. I hope you got something out of it. I certainly learned a ton. This is honestly the first time, as you saw, I opened up the box in front of you and uh, learned as I went. And there's a couple things that we learned, I think, today. The fact that the belt is not a complete loop, it comes apart, and that's a good thing. I find that as a, a feature as opposed to like something negative. Um, also, the fact that the motor has to be mounted on the right-hand side versus the left-hand side so that you have it properly oriented. You can pan, tilt, zoom, slide from side to side. I uh, still don't know about going faster than 40 seconds from point A to point B, but we'll figure that out in a future video. I plan, Nick and I plan to do many videos like this, specifically with the Rhino Arc 2 and also other tools that we use for our video production company that we are first starting out actually end of 2019, early 2020. So um, there's, yeah, like I'm saying, there's more videos like this to come with respect to starting a videography business, the tools that come along with it and everything else in between. So please stay tuned. For all of that and more to come nick should be around for the next video if not the one after that thank you guys for watching i'll see you in the next one